Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we'll be looking at my 1 over 60 scale uh, dual Gundam assault shroud armor on my strike Gundam. Uh, this is going to be a full custom video which I'll be doing a lot of scratch build. Uh, and this video of just going through about the arms. Okay, I'm going to split this part into multiple sections. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are interested or not, but I'm just going to just document all of this in the video. Alright, so enjoy the video. So here, uh, I'm going to show you guys how do I actually make this custom shoulders for the perfect grid, uh, perfect grid strike. Um, it's a pure custom build because there is no such thing as this 1 over 60 um, dual Gundam that I know. So I'm actually planning to design it and redo it uh, myself by using plow plates and other stuff. I do not want to make it into a pure kit bash as in taking parts from other Gundams and putting onto this uh, strike. Things sometimes might get a little bit weird and it don't it won't look uh, like a Buster Gundam. I mean for me especially. So I'm just gonna show you guys uh, how do I do it. Okay, uh, I'm not really sure if this is the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it, but this is my way to do it. As you guys, uh, I would also like to share with you guys is that I'm actually a graphic designer, so I work. I mean, I work well with, by by using a computer. I don't really know how to sketch or draw really well. So yeah, that that is why I'm actually using my computer. So I'm gonna show you guys what that I do. Okay, guys. So as you can see here, I'm actually working with this software called uh, called Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so I'm going to just fire up the file that I built. Okay, so as you can see over here, um, this is actually the uh, the my Gundam that I actually removed the armor of it, and then I measure it out by using centimeters, and then I put the picture into this software and resize it according to the size over here so now anything that I draw on here will be the size I uh, mean will be the actual size okay so what I actually did as you can see just now this part that I pull off I'm gonna just put it on here again so this is basically how it will look like once the kit uh, I mean the part that is built so you can see there is actually a small frame part here which need to be cut off right so how do i actually draw this is basically by using the pen tool i'll just remove this there is something called a pen tool which i can just tap it here click here click here maybe click here then i click here and stuff so you can actually design it the way you want it to then when you can just print it out and use it as a template all right so what have i done is actually i go online and search for some samples as you can see over here these are this is actually the sample that i found online and i use this as a guidance of the design what i'm going to do so i'm actually looking at this which is there is going to be one part at the back one more one more layer here so there's two layers and then this layer is going to be a chamfer, which is going to be smaller than the outside layer and then there is going to be this part over here and then this cut out over here and here it will be uh how would say it's like a sharp edge over here so what that i do is actually i um, draw this part here first which is the most bottom part which will be connected directly to this uh, inner frame and then I draw this uh, another part which is uh, something like this I think yep, something like this uh, this is going to be the chamfered part which will be in this one over here the, I mean the this part here this is the big one and this is the smaller one okay so I actually did two this, this part I didn't do much only this one here this part here is the smaller one so um, once you build I mean once you uh, I do this part 
you're gonna have to sand down this part to make it uh, align with uh, this part over here okay to create this effect over here right so this thing here is actually this part over here okay and then um, I'm now going to do this part out here which is these two parts this two part I actually make it slightly bigger because why is that um, this part is supposed to come up right it's supposed to be like this over here it's supposed to come out so when it comes out the top and the bottom will actually shrink so which is why I actually draw onto this part and then I make it slightly taller and then this two part over here which goes in inside here of course this is just a rough estimate uh, once you start um, building it on pla plate then you can actually adjust the size and maybe you want to make more details maybe more subscribing or something like that it's up to you guys so this is actually how I do it and then once I've done you can see over here I've done it uh, also for this uh, missile ports over here so as you can see there is actually one I mean one set of it uh, I mean two sets of each because why each of these there is a front and a back so front and the back uh, I mean each, each side is one side so four sides in total so that's why there's four and then as for this I also just do it um, front and the back so that is why there is two okay and I did and one thing is you guys notice is that I don't really do this part over here the thickness because I feel that all of this thickness stuff it might change in the actual product so I don't do it yet most important thing I get this um, proportions right and then I can just scratch build this part over here okay so basically that is the part uh, the computer part so I'm just gonna print it out okay guys so I've actually finished uh, printing this out and I cut out the paper and use it as a template for my plot plate so as you can see here I have two plot plates that is glued together and it's referring to the picture over here as you can see okay so now what I'm supposed to do is that I need to put in some putty sand it down and try to replicate the shape that you can see over here Okay guys, so as you can see, I've actually complete painting this part black. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use some putty to actually uh, do the triangular sharp design. So what you can see now over here is that I'm actually using uh, the putty. Putty actually works too. One is the putty and one more is the resin. The resin actually hardens it so you need to make sure both are 50-50 and you twist it like this to mix them up properly together so just keep pressing it out until you see an even color for it to actually work Okay, so I'm done. I'm just trying to make it into a circle and I put it into position where I want the sharp point to be at. 
and then take down my plot plate make sure the angles are correct so I'm going to just clean this up first before I glue it in Okay, so I'm going to just place the bottom part here first. Just align this properly. You must be very careful, but this party will take time to harden, so you still have some time to um, move it around. But try to move it, move it less as possible. Alright, so I've just glued it in like this. Angle out how I want it to be. Okay, just be very very careful make sure you turn it all around 360 degrees make sure everything is perfectly how you wanted it to be and make sure the gaps are closed and yep I think I'm done here just make some final adjustments oops I think the position of my party is wrong but it's fine I'll just do it again Okay, just press on it firmly make sure it has a good contact and should be good to go right so just make a final check and voila it's done so all you need to do is just leave it as it is for maybe one night and make sure that it will um, cure the next day and this empty part as you can see it's um, it's a part that I will just leave it empty for now and I will just think of a way how to cover it up later. Alright, so I think this is done for now. So what did I do over here is that um, So this is actually what the part is supposed to look like This is the assault shroud armor that I actually made for this kit It's a bit rough, it's actually a uh, prototype for now I'll add in more details and I will smoothen things up later But uh, most important thing I need to get the proportions right Right, so this is how it's supposed to look like So as you can see the arm over here there is this part that is protruding out so the armor here won't fit right so there is why I need to cut this part off okay so just uh, let me just chop it off okay. and you just chop this two part off you can just break it apart because this kit is very old so the plastic is pretty brittle so that is what I can do, I can just uh, pluck it out okay. so this is number one, number two, I need to use this part over here so what I do is actually I've cut out plow plates um, the shape of uh, this, this thing over here so what I'm going to do is that I'll just uh, fix this in and then just um, need to check which part there's a damage here so this part is inside okay so okay I'm going to just glue it in this way 
but before that I need to get this part over here also so what you need to do is that you have to align the front part over here so that it is able to be aligned with the front okay so what that I do is that I will take the super glue and then I will just dab it a little bit over here and this part over here okay so what I do is actually I put it on top like this and another one like this okay what I do is I will align the front and then the top here I will need to align it I need this part and this part to be flushed and for the front I need to be flush also so this is what I came up with okay so all you need to do is just weight it up and let it dry okay guys so this part is really been glued so it's already really been dry so I'm gonna just put uh, the other side and if you guys realize why they actually I use super glue instead of a plastic cement is because the plastic cement is actually very slow drying so I want to have a strong bond in a quick time because I'm always uh, on a time crunch so that is why I've been using super glue more than the plastic cement right so one thing you guys need to take in mind is that always glue this part over here do not glue this part okay so I'm just gonna just tap some glue around here then just put this thing in put this thing in need to be very careful with this Okay, so I've aligned it up. You need to be very careful because the super glue dries very fast. So you need to be quick and the, that's the suck part of it. But the good part about drying fast is that you can continue with your next phase really quick. Right? So that is why I'm using super glue. But you need to be careful if you align it wrongly, it will be very hard for you to dis, uh, dismantle it again. So that is one of it and it's quite hard to do this in front of a camera so yeah might have some issues so what I do actually I just try to align by eye this line over here with this thing over here make sure this uh, gray part here exposed out from this so later I need to make a plate to cover the front part over here by exposing this part over here okay so Bear that, bear that in mind secondly I need this thing over here to align with this part but most probably I will need to cut off some of this grey plastic I need this part over here is mainly because I need it to hold the shield because this is uh, on the left hand the left hand will actually have a shield attached to it but the right hand does not so why actually I glue up only the top part is mainly because this part over here I need to this is an example part that I made yesterday as a trial and error so I'm just going to remove this part and then just slide it out okay so basically this is what the armor looks like when I dismantle it so if you realize there is actually no uh, gray part 
see there is this gray part over here but over here I can really close it up so yeah this is what I made yesterday whole day spent just to make this and for some reason this hand over here the fingers keeps falling off so I don't know maybe I need to change the fingers with maybe some other like high grade I mean other perfect grade fingers or something okay so now uh, the glue is already dry so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just test it out I need to remove this uh, armor from the head okay so what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to fold this thing down hold the part that I just glued in this is actually the most strong point of the whole entire part so just hold it firmly and just slowly shake it out you can actually take out the hand too if you want I think take off the hand will be easier okay. so just pull right so this part over here do not touch it leave it at the side so this is actually basically what the main part of the armor that you guys could have okay and <clears throat> you can see the edges here are actually pretty rough so what I'm going to do later is just use the sanding stick over here just send it down to how you want it to be before you covering up this part okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sandpaper high grade sandpaper and just send it down why do actually I glue this in together and then only I set it down it's mainly because I want to get it even so that later on when I stick things on top of it, it will be flushed, right? So just continue sending down. See, so from what I did, now I send down, I actually realized that this part over here is higher than this part. So what I'm going to do is I actually send it down, try to align it as much as possible. So that later on when I glue the other plastic on top of it, it will be more even, right? So it's actually better to have your part to be slightly bigger than the others. Why do I actually separate these two parts instead of just one whole big piece and scribing? Well, um, mainly I just want to make it more realistic. I want it to be more separated, I would say. More parts. So it looks more realistic. Of course, I'm not a professional, I'm just doing it according to my own way. Oops. So now it's almost flushed. Okay, second problem that you guys can see is that when I put sideways over here, you can see this part over here is jumping out. Right? So all you need to do is try to remove that. So what I do is at the bottom here there is this piece over here that I can just push it out and pull this thing I think I should just remove this before I glue it in but I think it should be fine So this part is out so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just chop this part out to make it easier for me to just uh, install and dismantle it okay so this part over here I need to use for the other part um, for the other hand I actually don't use this because as I said just now it's the shield so I still need to use this um, I need to make sure this is the right place so all I'm gonna do is I take my plastic neighbor just chop it off please use a old paper do not use your new one but as for me I have a spare one so I need to wear this thing off before I can 
get the I use the the other one, right? So, oops. All right. So this part here has been chopped off. Let's me just try to test feed it, and yeah, it's flushed. Right? You can't see it anymore. So that part is considered done. So. All I will do now is continue sending now. Of course, uh, it depends on you guys what you guys want to do. This is just because I'm converting my kit into a uh, what is it called dual Gundam uh, assault shroud. So this is the assault shroud armor on a strike Gundam. So it depends on what you actually want to do with your kit. So this is just I'm just showing you guys what I do. For my kit. Yeah, another thing is that when you send this way, you guys can see if ever there's any sending marks on this part so that you know that um, is this part actually uh, interfering with the other part so that when you lay out your plastic, uh, your plant plates, it won't uh, how is it interfere. Okay, so let's just consider this done. Okay, next is that I cut off this plug plate over here, which is uh, aligned with this size. I actually normally do slightly bigger than usual. Uh, the usual is mainly because I can always send it down or cut out any extras, right? So that is why I always make things bigger than it usually is. Oh yeah, I actually missed out this part. Let me send it down. Okay, so this place is flush, this part is flush. So this one is supposed to cover the top here, and another one I will just cover the bottom. Okay, so what actually I do for this, we need to use some math. Uh, not to say math, but remember. So use the ruler and try to measure the part. So there is actually two, three parts to it. One is this line over here. Okay, this line over here, and then another small part over here, and then this long part over here. So you should stop around here, right? You can make it more, and I can set it down if I want, or I can just get it as exact as possible. I think few millimeters, one one millimeter different, I think should be fine. I don't think so is a big issue. So yeah. All I'm going to do now is just measure it. So it is 1.1 millimeters. Okay, so 1.1 millimeters. So always get a cutting mat like this so that you can get a very straight, smooth line, 90 degrees. Do not screw this up because I early on I actually did screw up. So as you can see, the plug plate is not really flush, right? Can you see that? Some plug plate actually comes out from this part. So I could just cut it out. Okay. Okay, now it is 90 degrees. I hope it is 90 degrees. Hmm, nope, it's not 90 degrees. Is it getting worse? Mm. 
I'm using the wrong hand so it's pretty hard for me to cut okay so finally got it to 90 degrees so 1.1 so what I do is I align this to the ruler, then mark it out. 1.1 Okay, 1.1 depends on you guys you guys can cut in deep or not it's your choice okay next is this part over here okay so here is how much is it one two three zero point three so all you need to do is align this to zero point three and then Plot in another mark. Same goes to here. One, two, three, here. Another mark. Right? Then the last part is the long one, which will be around 1.9. Okay, so 1.9. You guys can go too if you guys want to be safe, but I just try to make it as exact as possible. 1.9. Okay. That part. 1.9. Okay, so done. I've got all the markings. So what I'm going to do next is cut out the last part over here. Align the two marking. This part you need to be very precise. If you're not precise, then it won't work. It's a spare part right so this is the part that we are going to use for this um, arm over here so what I'm going to do is align those lines again okay. after aligning those lines just make this line one two that's it do not use too much force okay and then this part over here depending on the shape that you want to do but as for me I need to fold this into a uh, exact shape so all I need to do is I get this point over here make it deep ship it to the back look at the points again and then align the mark One, two. Do not use strength, or it will just break. So this is basically what I need. So all I'm going to do now is the part that is cut. 
can just slightly fold it slowly okay okay so it's slightly fold and then the other side so I normally use the thinner plug lid for this kind of part because it's easier to fold and the structure will be slightly stronger than you just cut off parts and you need to remove more lines right okay so this is what it comes up with this is the shape and the shape of this will be there right so it's actually quite similar but what I'm going to do is I try to get it more but must be very careful because this part can break pretty easily so do not use too much force all right I think there's too much force okay, so this is what it will look like so just set this aside what I'm going to do next is as you know super glue so this part over here I screwed up it's actually way too low so I can't glue this part but I can glue this part so this part is glue this part okay so what I'm to do now is just align it goes in pretty pretty well and snugly of course there is a lot of uh, things as for here you can see there is actually a gap right can you still I see a gap right so this gap over here I will actually fill it up with putty when I'm going for painting so for now this I think will do it is very hard for me to sand it down because this part of here is jogging out higher than this part over here so it's very hard for me to get in with a sanding stick to sand down that part to make it align so it's better for me to just add a putty later on right so this will do for now and we just wait it to dry and for um for a time being i think i can just make this part i can't really remember how do i make this part yeah i think it's i could actually make one two three three of that in just one piece but for my this first one that I did made is only one piece at the top so I can still use this just align it up and just cut it here pretty straightforward right so all I'm gonna do is the same thing 1.5 1.6 this part here 1.6 yep so 1.6 it is 1 .6. Food must be ready. 1.6 over here. 5, 6. So, I'm actually really, really bad at scratch building, but this is actually my practice. Um, my theory is, I'm still theory. My method is if you're not good at it, keep doing until you are good at it, right? so i might make some mistakes but this is why we're doing things it's fine okay so line it up okay so let's start I usually like to press it down but it's pretty hard 
because every time you press down the glue oozes out so it might get into your hand but I will just normally leave it this way for a while and then I will just press it down slightly because it's still very wet so this part will keep flowing around see I get it to my hand again so I guess it's closed up Okay, so just let it dry and just come back later, okay? No rush it. Okay guys, so here, this is actually what my uh, Strike Gundam actually looks like now. So I've actually completed the dual Gundam conversion for the arms and shoulders. Alright, so for my first video, I'll just be talking about this. Um, so as you can see, all the grey parts are the parts that actually I... Um, scratch build for this kit except for this part this part over here I've been using some uh, leftover parts from MG uh, Axia or strike and stuff like that so I yeah basically I just kit bash some parts over here and it looks quite detailed which I also like of course this won't be the final form for the arms um, I was still I will still be adding some uh, plow plates or maybe some uh, prescribing details and etc to match this part over here because this part over here is very detailed but the other parts are not as detailed as you can see the side rocket launcher over here um, I actually add some details and this part black um, this this part as you can see actually is a hole there I'll be adding some inner details later on uh, when I finalize the kit okay um then yeah the gun over here i think i'll just talk about the shield first for the shield i'll be still using this strike shield of course because they what is called this dual gundam actually using the same shield as the strike so i'll be using back this shield but the connection behind here i need to modify it to be longer um, because this armor part here is actually thicker and then the connector for the arms are actually pretty short that's number one and number two um, this shield is very bulky the shoulders are very bulky so it's pretty hard to get the angle correct so that is why i actually uh, custom made this um, joint over here so that it's actually fully articulated uh, shield you can put it behind the arm or in or the side of the arm right so that's that's the actually the latest custom that actually I done today. Okay, so for the gun over here, um, what actually I used for the gun is actually the um, what is it called? Uh, Nadale. Yeah, this is a Nadale gun um, from a HG one. It's a HG skilled gun. And then what I do is actually I take other parts of uh, weapons and guns from other kits and chop them up and just add it into the side here to get give it a detail right because if i would just use the hg gun on the shoulder it will just be too skinny and too small it looks weird and i actually thought of using an mg gun but the mg gun somehow looks too long and too big and i saw some um pictures online um the the this dual gundam shoulder uh, cannon thing over here the gun over here supposed to look like this you have the flat front so other guns that I have actually have the rounded barrel in front so it didn't look that um, actual life I, 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 I feel so this is one of it so what do you guys think the gun not bad right Okay guys, so here is a look closer to the parts that I actually made. What do you guys think about it? Hope you guys like it. This is the gun. Yeah, my, my focus is pretty bad. Yeah, this is the shoulders and then the arm. 
the arm over here I guess I should add in more details later on uh, currently actually I did scribe some um, details not sure if you guys can see yeah as you can see there is actually some panel lines there which I have not uh, paneled yet because I still need to paint it and then this is the connector for the shield I actually use the actual original connector for here and for the shield and then this part this L shape thing I get it from some HG kits with the articulated arm and surprisingly the articulated arm is strong enough to hold up this massive shield okay and it's actually very heavy so if you guys see properly you guys can see it's actually slanting towards the right or the left of this Gundam okay and another part that I would say I need to touch up later on are the shoulders so as you guys can see inside is actually pretty hollow uh, what is actually inside you look at this rounded part is actually a putty that I put inside to give it a 3d look I want it to not just be flat I want it to come up with a triangular sharp end over here and it's pretty hard for me to make plow plate here so I just be leaving it like this for now and in the future if I have time I'll actually touch it up maybe I'll put in more putty and sand it down to make it smoother or maybe I just try to put plow plate in there okay and then this gun holder over here I also did some details I see some online builds that this top of the gun area is actually pretty empty and blank right so yeah that is one of my custom that i made and all of this i actually plug and play you guys i can remove it and paint up uh, to paint it separately and then i attach it back right you can see this um, here i think i just set the camera down first okay so you can look at this uh gun over here what actually I do is that I add in a pack over here. This is from a rounded plow plate. Okay, so what I do is that I drill a hole on top of this shoulder just to plug this in so that I can paint this separately from the Gundam. Most people do uh, custom Gundams, they actually uh, glue the whole part onto the Gundam and then they mask it out and Paint. I don't really like masking so I rather just make it detachable which for me will looks way better and it's easier to paint because the parts are not as huge right even the shoulders over here this uh, shoulder armor this shoulder armor over here are the same there is a pack over here which looks something like this something like this but it's up here i put in a um, sticky tag here is to make it tighter so that it's not wobbling around and for the strike here i actually made a hole over here and glue in a rod uh, plow plate which is small enough for this hole over here right i think i should use a bigger one but i think this is fine enough so all i need to do is just align it and just put it in so it's actually pretty simple so when i paint it it's actually pretty easy even the arms arms are also detachable normally this front part here i will glue it in when the final product comes i'll just currently hold up with sticky tag okay and then this arm armor you guys i can just pull it out slowly need to be very careful okay so as you guys can see this is the arm armor and it can detach easily from this kit because the back part over here is actually the back armor of this strike so since this back armor wouldn't be visible from the front so i just use this whole back armor as the piece for this right so it's pretty simple 
nothing much and I actually add some plot plates from BM details but I still feel this part is too blank this bottom part I didn't add much details here because I thought that this part is black supposed to be black in the final product so I didn't add in some details but I think I'll be adding more details here add in something here too so and down here I need to scrap some panel lines cannot just leave it blank and yeah I think that's it nothing much this rod over here I yeah just glue it in pretty straightforward so I think there's nothing else that I could say about this kit the only difference between the left and the right arm is that the shield I could opt out of using the shield it will actually make my life easier but I am the type of person that I like to include as much things as possible to the kit. So since the dual Gundam actually have a shield, so I might as well just leave the shield on there, right? So that is my theory. Okay guys, so this is my build for GBWC this year, if it happens this year, okay? Um, please let me know what you guys think about the kit and do my tutorial actually help you guys? I'm not really sure because I don't think you guys will be building this exact thing that I'm doing but hopefully my tutorial per se actually help you guys with the projects that you guys are doing okay um so leave me leave it down in the comments below what you guys think about my kit over here any comments or suggestions also just put it down in the comments below all right and leave me a like and subscribe it will help me a lot too since um there is going to be a two weeks staying at home so i actually can build this gunpla and i hopefully i could finish it maybe around 60 or 70 percent will be great so tomorrow onwards i will be working on the chest and then the skirt and the final part i will leave is the legs and the head because i feel the legs and the head is the hardest part of this build okay so i will just leave this chest for another video okay see you guys later take care goodbye guys